Well, teaching children to embrace their inner scientists, that is what this English-Spanish book, We Are All Scientists, Todos Somos Científicos, is all about. It was written by the first ever Latina astronaut, Dr. Ellen Ochoa. She is here this morning to tell us all about it, more about her experience in outer space. Dr. Ochoa, <laughs> nice to have you here. Thank you, it's such a pleasure. So the first time you went into outer space, 1993, yes. right? Yes. What was that like? Uh, fantastic. You know, it's an experience like no other, and viewing the Earth from space is, you just never get tired of it, and trying to figure out how to live and work in an environment where you're floating and everything is floating, it, it's, <laughs> it's a real experience. So what was it like as a Latina to break the, basically, um, atmospheres, glass ceiling? Well, you know, while I was in space, totally focused on the mission, it was a science mission, we were studying the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, but once I did get back, I had a lot of invitations to speak at schools, a lot of them with high Hispanic or Latino um, mm. populations. And, you know, that just added a whole dimension to the job of astronaut. Yeah, because I think growing up in a Mexican household and Mexican community, that was definitely not on the list of things that maybe you think you could do <laughs> right. or that your parents maybe said that you could do. So when you grew up, is that something mm -hmm. you were like, that's exactly what I want to be? Was anyone feeding into you and kind of helping you figure that out? Definitely not specifically science or engineering. Yeah. Didn't, didn't know any scientists or engineers. I was 11 when the Apollo 11 astronauts mm -hmm. landed on the moon. So of course, everybody was watching, everybody yeah. was talking about it. But nobody would have ever asked a girl um, you know, is this something you want to grow up and do? Because yeah. that just wasn't a career open to women. But, you know, that changed as I got older. Uh, and uh, through um, my interest in math, I decided to check out science when I was in college, and, cool. and that's when it changed. And I think this is what the book does so well, is that it explains every single science background from biologists <laughs> to meteorologists. Right. And, and how you say that in Spanish is actually very difficult. Meteorologos. <laughs> there you go, there you go, Mike. But I love that you can kind of show every single background and, you know, this is the path that you can take in science in Spanish and in English. What's the feedback you've gotten from it? Yeah, well, what I really wanted to try to get across uh, was that uh, children naturally wonder why and ask questions about the world around them, and that's exactly what scientists do. Mm. And if they can start thinking from a really young age, well, I could be a scientist because that's what I like to do. I like to explore and ask questions. Yeah. Uh, I really want them to start thinking about it as a like young a seat age. Early. Yeah. I, I, it's just a great way to open up the possibilities to young children without like, kind of hammering it over their <laughs> right. head. Yeah. Right? So um, I know you also went up to the International Space yes. Station. What was that like? What did you have to do? Because usually, like, you have to fix things. <laughs> I can't even, like, get out, put a light bulb in. <laughs> You know well, what I mean? Yeah, I had two missions that were part of actually assembling the International Space Station. Wow. Uh, one of them was the very first mich uh, mission to dock with the station. Um, it was small, just two modules. Nobody was living on board yet. And then three years later, I got to go back. And by that time, crews were living on board. We had the U.S. lab. We had an airlock. We had a... Uh, robotic arm that I got to use and we were adding the very first piece of the truss structure which is now 350 feet long and the four big solar arrays that power the station hang off of it. Wow. So it was quite spectacular to see it grow. So what was the craziest thing that ever happened to you in space that you would be like, <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I never thought that would happen to me in my lifetime. You know, uh, there are so many amazing experiences. I mean, certainly one of the fun things is uh, on my first flight, uh, you know, one of the astronauts um, was probably about twice as big as me, and I could balance him on the end of my finger, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can do on her. Yeah, but, definitely But, you know, the sights were incredible. I, I do remember on my uh, fourth and final mission, we um, had undocked from the station. We were moving away. Um, we're kind of waiting for sunrise, which happens really quickly when you're traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. But on the Earth, you could see aurora, um, you know, near the, oh, wow. the upper latitudes as we were going cool. around. And it's, it's kind of the most science fiction-y thing, I yeah. think, that you see from space is that the, these green filaments, just uh, really spectacular. Wow. Right, so I know you said you retired, was it four years ago? 
Yes, from okay. NASA after 30 years. So I'd love to know. I mean, you're part of this elite group of people that went up to space. Yeah. Do you guys get together for coffee? <laughs> do you guys meet up once? Like we, we do. Have a, okay. We do. Yeah. Um, there's astronaut reunions every couple of that years. Is so cool. And um, you know, when I'm traveling around, I try to meet up with folks that I know. There's actually five retired astronauts in Idaho where I now live, wow. and I, you know, I've seen all of them. I understand Mike Massimino. Oh, you gotta bring up Mike Massimino. So please, please say hi to Mass. And next yeah. time you see him. Oh, you yeah. call him Mass. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we know. <laughs> exactly. So, listen, a friend of mine worked for NASA. She was not an astronaut. She was one of the technicians. Smart, mm -hmm. smart lady. She said those astronauts party. <laughs> <laughs> Like when there was a, a mission that was scrubbed, it was like, I'll meet you at them. Tell the truth. Well, it kind of depends if you're still in quarantine or not, right? Oh, okay. Because like if a mission gets delayed or scrubbed, yeah. uh, you know, some something happens or weather. Uh, if you're still in quarantine, you can't really be around any other people. But if you know it's going to be more than a week or so, then you, you have a little bit of downtime. <laughs> I love it. Wow, wow. I love the way she went. Little downtime. <laughs> oh, so where can people find the book and 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 you know? Uh, well, as they say, anywhere books are sold. Yeah. Uh, certainly from the publishers, LittleLibros.com. But uh, anywhere else that you buy books, they they we carry love it. Great book. Thank Dr. You. Thank you so Stella World. We are all scientists.